actually, I'm starting in a slightly different place. When you see those young aid workers for concern and what they're doing, shame on the New York Times to racistly say that young people who fell off a balcony were obviously being reckless and partying and being drunk. Because that's the young people of Ireland that represents us so well. And I think shame on the New York Times. Now they've apologized, they got it wrong, yeah. but what a racist slap. <laughs> I could be a little touchy at the moment. I just want to um, say well done to Orla today because Orla, I'm impressed yet again, but today by your resilience. Now, you know, I don't a guy talking about his wife, you know, so it's a bit much. But um, Orla, the fact that you're up there today, smiling as you are, uh, by the way, you're wondering why you're here. Uh, th these are our two sons, Larkin and Cormac, 20 and 22. Uh, Orla demanded that to be here last night because um, uh, a, a little boy, as we knew, in between, between those two lads, uh, was on the balcony and died. And um, to be in that house yesterday, and to the um, I, 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 I've never seen such despair. People. The mother actually fainted a few times, you know, like, it just, um, yeah, and, and all of that you can stand, because, I, I, you know, that you stand up there, I, I know you're resilient because you've had to put up with me for 22 years, but like, uh, I'm even more impressed by your resilience today. Um, so look at it, come here, I, I, the little thing I want you to do, if there's a pen or pa paper in front of you, would you write out the three, four, five, or whichever comes out? Irish business people you admire the most, or you think are the most successful. You don't have to write it down, just what names would, would uh, come to mind. And uh, at the end of this, I'm just going to put a question to you. I, I, I'm really looking for your support here, because I, I, I'm beginning to feel almost a stranger in my own country in the last number of months. And if I'm right, and I think you know, I'm, I'm preaching here to the converted because we're entrepreneurs. But if I'm right in what I'm saying, I just want you to politely applaud at the end. Uh, how right we are or how wrong I am, I measure by your applause. So I'm putting a bit of a challenge uh, to you. Now you're what the hell is he going on about? I'm beginning to worry about my moral compass. Because you know, I believe the key central thing in business is integrity, right? And um, I'm beginning to doubt myself because things that I believe are right, well, according to the media, they're actually wrong. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm getting slightly uncomfortable. So I think if Ireland was cheated out of the 2010 World Cup, not by a handball, right? Yes, that, that happened as well. But because FIFA rigged the seedings for the qualifying playoffs to put Ireland against the strongest team in the playoffs, who we still nearly bet because you know the Irish, give them a challenge, make them an underdog, God help you, playing them in Paris, right? If the FAI has seizes the opportunity to actually start kicking the table and saying, demanding sort of, uh, and threatening legal action, gets five million euro for it, at a time when they're absolutely strapped, and this is for our national stadium, uh, and, you know, I, I don't know, I mean, I don't see that as, a, oh, but then I'm told in me, oh, you would have kept it a secret. You know, any organisation when you're in that sort of sports area, if you say, oh, we've just got a few million, you don't get any more funding from, from, from the state, etc. But like, I suppose, yeah, you, you judge me, but I don't see that that is is as wrong as the general media seemed to think it was. I, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, no, 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 but, 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 but it leads on to sort of what I want to talk about, because if we talk about Ireland's top entrepreneurs, now, 
If I was going to start, I'm going to flash up quickly five uh, forests. These are people I just admire. I've had the pleasure to walk some of the road with them. Um, Peter, it doesn't include you, okay? But if I was giving an award for the best crack as an entrepreneur, he wins it uh, hands down. Uh, he has more money than sense, but gosh, uh, with that lack of sense of times when he parties, he is the best part. But the thing I can never understand about this man is uh, he parties until the early hours of the morning and he's up and at it at five. I don't know how you do it, but I want to know the name of your pharmacist, okay? Um, the, the other thing, if I was talking about the most understated, modest entrepreneur, Patrick, I, I, I've always known you know that, and I'm just so thrilled that after all, because I know how hard you worked that in eight, eight uh, now the thing is, you're not going to retire, you know that, don't you? I know the type you are, but, but uh, uh, you, you know, you're, you're, you're an amazing uh, person. Ray Coyle, I would also like to have included in my list. Any guy in the middle of a recession sells a factory for 12 billion in Czechoslovakia, or gets 12 billion out of it, so, and takes it and goes up to the back end of Mead and builds a theme park. And now it's the third biggest visitor. So in the middle of a recession to do that, I think we should build a statue to him. The statue would look like Mr. Tato, but you know, he's, 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 uh, he's amazing. Um, but uh, let's look at the names that would have come into your head for a second, right? Um, the one thing you're going to see the recurring theme is here. They might be successful, but gosh, they're not popular. There's question marks about them, apparently. Margaret Heffernan. Um, look, if she didn't really engage in a bit of an internal war in Duns in the early 90s and up the fashion offer, whereas Ben had been sort of going the price war route, let's have a milk war, let's have a bread war, price war, etc. When Aldi and Lidl came along, because they would have just been discounting, I think they would have been wiped out. I think she was a genius to actually up Duns and put it sort of, it was broad, but just bring up particularly the, the fashion clothing offer uh, better and just, Patrick, what a hard, hard worker. Uh, I found it hard to get a photograph of Larry smiling, but, but, but I, I, I did get one. Um, but again, I've never seen him referred to in a national newspaper without the moniker, the controversial Larry Goodman. Uh, that a chap on the back of a truck in the 70s, I need mean, no more than that, you have him going, and you know his, his beginnings, is now not just the biggest meat operator in Europe, in the world, it's an amazing story. And we all know had his difficulties in the late 80s, every property he had to sell to keep his business going, he went out and bought it again, and his empire was soon back bigger, better, and stronger uh, than ever. Michael. Uh, um, I said, I'm exaggerating, I said I walked the road with all of these. Very early on in our relationship, he sacked me. Uh, I was working in Edelman. I had a sort of slightly different view of uh, a comment he made on a radio station at the time. And what I realized about Michael is he likes being controversial. So if you tell him, don't say that, he actually goes and says that uh, on uh, the radio. But look at what he's done with a business, right? By the way, I'm doing these in order of what I think. So five, four, this is number three. Um, Stephen, you pour a glass of water there, please. Um, just an amazing uh, success. Um, Liam Casey. Um, and he's coming to speak to uh, our organization in uh, September. Don't miss it. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to be up there at number two because a guy who was running a tailor shop in Grafton Street in the 80s, how he is Mr. China now, and how, like I've known this guy and I've traveled the whole journey with him, how he's Mr. China, how he's 10 years ahead of the rest of us on technology. And of course, he's the man who coined that great phrase, um, ge uh, geography is history. Because he was the first one that realized, it doesn't matter where you are on the planet anymore. You know, you can turn that off there, look now. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are on the planet anymore. It will, uh, 
with the technology, you can do it. But that, an Irish company headquartered in Cork, operations of Syngen, development in Silicon Valley, is actually uh, the main logistics support to Apple and all of the big companies. It's just amazing. Uh, he's uh, not married, he's single, thank you. Uh, he just lives in hotels, he's a weird person. Um, now, he's not controversial because nobody in Ireland knows him. If he was operating out of Ireland, if he spent more time here, Jesus, they'd drag him down. You know what I mean? I've no doubt they'd find so He's not married, has to be gay. You know, he's not, by the way, but you know, they, 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 they would. But undoubtedly, the best business person in Ireland, I believe one of the best on the planet, is that man there. And I'm telling you, it's very hard to get a photograph of him smiling these days. All right. Um, and why I say he's the best, it is Michael O'Leary had Tony Rowan's money. He's still a genius. He's done a fantastic job, the best marketer we've ever had. Margaret Heffernan would always the first thing she'd say, if it wasn't for me, Daddy, I wouldn't be here. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, so that's why uh, you know I, I, I put them a little bit, a little bit lower, right? Casey's built a billion dollar company from a suitcase. And Dennis O'Brien, wow. And it's his ability to buy companies in sectors that he may not be that knowledgeable in, and he can catch up, oh sorry, I'll go back, that he can catch up and turn them into successes. It's amazing. It's just one little thought I want to leave you with today. What is it about our country, now that we're in recovery, that our media keep wanting to look back? So Mr. Cardiff is saying in the Parliament as we speak, in the Iraq, the Civil Committee saying, well, I was against the uh, bank guarantee myself. So sure, of course he'd say that. Uh, and, and Brian Lennon was too, so sure, we can't call Brian as a witness, he's dead. So, you know, but why does it, uh, it happen? Let's move on. But that's it. And of course, we have to now have an inquiry into SiteServe. Now, here's the figures I want to leave you with. Oh, Danny is there. All right, so here's the figures. Danny, I was told to stretch or shorten depending on your arrival. Thank you. Um, here are the figures. Dennis bought SiteServe for 45 million euro. Now, of course, Catherine Murphy um, and others keep saying, yeah, but there was 110 million write-off. Okay? He bought it from the liquidators of the Irish Bank Resolution Corporation. Okay, because we keep saying IBRC. We forget it was bad bank, get all of the stuff into it, cook the debt, and sell it to the highest bidder. That's what happened. And Dennis O'Brien uh, bought SiteServe at 45 million. But now we've been told, oh no, there was the possibility that a French company might have bought it for 65 million. Now, there would have been a lot of warranties, there would have been a lot of things, and they weren't going to produce the cash straight away, but they might have bought, now they were a competitor, and they weren't going to buy it and, you know, and, and kill it off, or maybe they were. You know. But Dennis O'Brien was there with 45 million to buy it. So let's just say, if the fallacy of the French offer is real. It means that we, the Irish taxpayers, forget about the write-off. That's not to do with him. <laughs> do, do you accept that? Yeah, yeah, just because, uh, you know, it was written off and then it was put to the market with that write-off, okay? And just so we're clear. So, 45, we could have got apparently 65 from a French company. So we're told. I, I don't believe it, but let's just accept that for the moment, Connor, okay? That means he got it at a 33% discount. All right? Yeah, that 33% discount. But now we're holding an inquiry about it. Donald Trump buys an asset in Ireland at 92% discount. He says he might invest 35 million in it because he's a great PR guy. 
right? His hype is as high as his hair. He's in there and he's saying, you know, I could do this. Dennis O'Brien bought SiteServe, saved 1,500 jobs, has invested another 40 million on top of the 45, and now it employs 3,200, and the business is flying. And that kills people, I think, in Ireland. But no. When Donald Trump turns up, all the government ministers and everybody is there to welcome him. How do I get the play? I just hit it again. <laughs> Trump steal, right? I'm fair to so him. He's bought a great asset and using his uh, marketing and hype. Let's hope it goes very, very well for Ireland, as I'm sure it will. But I just think. Am I sort of very wrong, or is the national media just very critical? And I think we have to realise there was huge mistakes made. We're heading into a recovery. Let's start looking forward as a nation. Let's start looking to the opportunities and stop looking back seeing who was to blame, because there is no gain in that game. I hope you agree with me. Thank you very much. Thank you.